Good afternoon guys, it's Jaeger262 and welcome back to Armored Warfare. Today I'm going to be looking at the first in the series of new tanks that just came in as part of the Bastille Day update, which is a video I made a couple days ago, and Bastille Day is tomorrow. However, the vehicle you see before you, the Al Hussein Hybrid, is not actually on the French tech tree. If you remember, it is taking the Ariettes, the C1 Ariettes place on the British heavy tank line. And for good reason. So the Al Hussein hybrid is a Jordanian upgrade to the Challenger 1, which is why it looks so recognizable. It is literally just a Challenger 1 with a few armor and gun upgrades to make it an effective tank killer and give it more battlefield longevity. At least is how the Jordanians saw it and this has released to the public in 2004 however not a lot of information actually exists on it but what you'll notice when i go into the stats is that beyond just having era protection and active hard kill aps the gun fires faster than the challenger has better penetration than the challenger and just overall operates a little bit differently the reason for that is the jordanian army actually removed the 120mm L11 British guns in favor of the Swiss RUAG Smoothbore CTG or Compact Tank Cannons, which also is a little bit shorter than the Challenger's gun. And so I'm going to bring up the stats here, but that actually does play a lot into what makes this tank different than the Challenger 1 and ultimately the Challenger 2, and why I personally enjoy it so far, even though I haven't played a lot with it. So first things first, before I get to any stats, it has a crazy DPM at tier eight of 3,967 damage per minute. That is crazy. Again, I haven't played it enough to tell if that's actually accurate and it does do that on average, or if that's just because the gun stats are really good, but it has the highest DPM of the battle tank selected for this comparison, which I have here are the other tier eight main battle tanks that I feel like match it the closest. Of course, the C1 Arietti, which it replaced, the M1A2 Abrams, and the Leopard 2A4 Evolution. Now, I should have put the other Leopard on there, but I actually play with the Evolution more, so I just thought one is enough. And then, of course, we have the Challenger 1 here, simply because it's basically a Challenger hull. So the engine, how the hull operates, all that is the same. The only thing different with this one is the turret. So to supplement this crazy damage per minute, it also does the highest average damage of all the other MBTs in this comparison with a 575 average roll on the RNG compared to the 550, which we get with the Challenger 1 or the Abrams. It also has the same 700 millimeters of base penetration as an upgraded M1A2 or a Leopard 2A4, which is crazy high you're going to be able to trade really well with other tier 8 heavies or sorry that's all the tanks up tier 8 mbts or even tier 9 mbts it's good penetration also it has an 8.7 second reload time which i'm using a special commander here and i'm using it for all i'm using her for all my vehicles so that reload time is a little bit faster but still 8.7 seconds is quite good and i that's kind of why this DPM is so high and also another way that the smoothbore gun affects it because as you know the Challenger has almost the actually the longest reload time out of these vehicles at 11.7 seconds so quite a big difference there it also is the heaviest vehicle with 4,000 hit points which is only 50 more than the Challenger 1 gets at tier 7 so the ERA protection in terms of hit points you have way more than other tanks have just rolling into it. The reason I say that is because if you look at the armor, the ERA protection is added into these armor values, and that's why the 4,000 hit points are so high, because it doesn't do that much, to be completely honest. And the hull armor is really, really low. At 460, it's lower than everything except the Leopard. And again, because the Leopard also gets a good ERA compliment but crazy compared to 690 690 on the challenger one 
320 in the front, 70 millimeter back. Um, or sides, sorry. 460 in the front, 275 on the sides, compared to 690 and 320, respectively. That's ridiculously low. Same thing with the turret, 576 millimeter frontal, which is the same as the Challenger 1, less than the Arietti, and way less than the Abrams, but we know that the Abrams has crazy turret armor, crazy cheeks on it, can't really penetrate. And I'll show you that in the armor model later where you can easily penetrate the Al Hussein compared to the Challenger 1. Mobility is going to be exactly the same as the Challenger 1, 55 kilometers an hour, 9.39 seconds to get to 32 kilometers an hour, weighs the same at 70,000 kilograms. And hull traverse is slightly worse, 26.47 compared to 26.99 that's not really that big of a difference but technically it is worse at turning than the challenger one camouflage beats the challenger it has 13 13 13 how it gets a perfect 13 i don't know so it's not the best it's not the worst considering that the abrams gets 10 <laughs> uh but you know 15 15 and then leo's 15 15 15 so not awful 430 meter view range on the move view range stop they don't give us i don't know why that statistics hidden i guess they just assume we'll always be on the move but 430 millimeters is standard as you can see the only reason that the challenger has 415 is because it's tier 7. nothing special there gun depression negative 10 degrees that's decent again it's almost standard it beats the arietti by one degrees now here's where the gut handling's a little bit tricky, but also really shines. So it has a min spread of 0.109, which is worse than the Arietti, but way more accurate than the Challenger 1 and the Abrams. Well, not way more. I mean, you got 0.12 and 0.11. So 0.10 is not really that much better, but it's going to hit more shots than either the Challenger or the Abrams. Uh, it's gonna snap them better. It's worse than the Leo, but we know the Leo's a good sniper. And the Leo has crazy aim time, so does the Abrams. This one, the Al Hussein's aim time is only 0.2 seconds worse at 1.56. But I don't really see that as being an issue. As long as you have a good crew, it'll be able to, along with the 700... Oh, that's the important part, but... Along with the 750 millimeters penetration and this really fast reload time, and these stats here, it's going to be doing comparable damage gun-wise to an Abrams or a Leo, but have the armor profile of a Challenger, which is why I like it so much. It combines, for me, the best of both worlds. A very heavy vehicle with very good gun handling. The only difference is, is that its turret traverse is abysmal with 30.52 degrees per second. So you're going to turn one turn slower in general than the challenge one but now your turret's also going to be slower so i wouldn't try to do any crazy close quarters combat you obviously can face hug and hold down really well but don't get too close because you'll be flanked really easy and when i said hold down it's not necessarily true let me show you its armor profile real quick so i showed you this in my other video earlier this week but this whole this whole bottom plate here is pretty much you can't angle it no matter how you move your tank that's just going to be easily penetrated so i mean even if you hull down to the extreme like this unless you're literally they're shooting on top of you there's no way to protect this plate so what i would recommend is just using terrain to just cover everything just park behind rocks, balls, because once you get up here, the only thing they're going to hit is, again, the driver's hatch, which is the same as the Challenger one. So other than that, great armor profile. It's just this lower plate you really can't do anything with. Hull down, angle, doesn't really matter. That's a bummer, but it's one of those things that keeps this vehicle from being overpowered, so it's okay. And that's about it for stats. Uh, the reason I would recommend picking this up is because unless you didn't have, if you didn't have the Arietti, then I would pick one up because of the gun handling and everything, and it has some pretty decent upgrades. So along with the gun, the Jordanians added, again, the hard kill APS, 
the ERA package and you retain the improved range finder so it gives you better view range and an improved loading system which is why the reload is so fast and those upgrades are reflected in this vehicle including the day and night system quote unquote all it does is give you a little bit extra view range but that is present and so it's just a really good vehicle in my opinion all around and if you had the C1 Arietti already, again, you get all of this unlocked and it's 100% ranked up. So I would recommend playing it as much as possible. If you were grinding for the C1 Arietti and you're still in your challenge when you don't know what to do, I would keep going because this vehicle is going to play like a challenger, but with a gun that can really do some serious damage. So all in all, I would highly recommend it. I've, again, I've played a couple of battles with it. I'm going to play some gameplay now. I'm going to do same as usual. I haven't done a review in a long time, but I think it's 2 PvE, 2 PvP, but we'll see what I do. I might just do one on one or the other. But first impressions, because I've already played some battles with it, very strong main battle tank, and I absolutely love it. So I highly recommend it, but let's get stuck into some gameplay first. All right, so we're spawning into Roughneck tier. Decent matchup. Ascot is just firing. Um, so you can see, yeah, it's just as slow as the Challenger 1. So what I'm going to try to be doing is moving up into the refinery there. Probably play around the G3. Oh, it's an encounter map. Wow, I should have, I should have noticed that first. Alright, then yeah, I'm definitely going to there because. That's where most of the fighting is going to probably be for that cap circle. So yeah, same ground resistances. These are statistics that don't really show you in the comparison, but if you play the vehicles enough, you can tell. It feels almost exactly the same to the Challenger one. It's ground resistance. Oh, the spotting is nice. Wow, I have a nice view range. I forgot that, yeah, I get... 430 because I am um, a tier 8 MVP. So I'm going to put a prototype right there. Identify. There's that new tank destroyer. I do love that tank destroyer, by the way. I don't have it yet, but I've been messing around with it and got its stats. It's cool. But yeah, so that hard kill APS comes in handy. Those heat missiles are no joke in the vista. Alright. Didn't do much damage. I don't know what he was shooting with. Prototype. I have no repair kits on this vehicle, so blocked it. Love the armor on this vehicle. Five hundred nine. So yeah, five fifty four and five hundred nine. We're not doing well. Fifty five fifty four. So we're doing pretty decent damage rolls here. Not not terrible. I didn't pick the best position to defend from. Just trying to keep that lower plate like a key thing. Oh, 
so yeah, that's that volley. That's another reason why I like that. It has a volley option with the planet, so it can fire two missiles at once, which will disrupt APS. And then the second missile will hit you, it hits right in the side, right there. Ah, yeah, that sucks. Yeah, that means he's, yeah, right here. Swing around this way. This side of this turret. With 700 millimeter penetration, that should have gone through. Could have been an easy kill. Identify target. Awesome. There's that Mephisto. Alright, so I'm about to get Identify target. Awesome. He's gonna be the so I can I think. Well he did, but I blocked it because uh, get that kill there. I really don't want that tank to swear to get shoot me in the butt there. Oh please. No. I mean I do have APS, but Two kills, I'll take two kills. I'm gonna go this way for the T90 so I can avoid getting sniped in the back of the creeper. Hopefully. I only got 204 HP left. So. Oh wow, how did I miss that? So I definitely don't want to do anything yet. But he's still in like He's gonna spot me every time. To kill him, hopefully, and stay right in the end of it. I don't know if he over there, so hold on. Gotta go assist. That was my bad. I just assume he's still gonna take it out. Identify target. Awesome. Oh, okay, missed. He's got any type of attack down. Ooh. Oh man, he almost did, and thank God for my teammate who killed him. To uh, the other Al Hussein, he had my back. Thanks Identify. That view can be able to outspot me every single time, so. I'm gonna try to hang back behind this wall. Man, he got four kills. Seven kills between us, the two Al Husseins. Again, I'm telling you, it's a great MBT. I really do like it. This beeper's got three kills. That is a fast thing, too. Everybody's guess what he was. On one hand, I want to find him, but on the other hand, I feel like. No, I can't. Yeah, they got him. I 
mean, I'll move up now. It's kind of more of an, an empty gesture. I mean, the, our Ascot Light is on full health, so yeah. Good game, though. I'll take that victory, four to zero. Some good plays on the enemy team. Almost died. Almost died. Came within an inch of my life. Um, seven four thousand. What about? 3,700 damage, not bad for tier 8. That puts me in second place. Puts me in fourth place. Uh, the other Al Hussein did nearly double my damage, so again, not only thank you to Windwalk for saving my life, but well played, excellent player. Um, details. So yeah, I mean, game one so far in PvP, I'd say it's a good game. Let's get into a second one. Right, we're on Coastal Threat, another top tier map. Love it. Also, I forgot to mention this because I didn't even bother to look. But last game, I was firing my APCR rounds, or actually, sorry, it's again, what? My Sabo rounds. And I forgot that the 700mm penetration is heat, and I believe I was looking at heat stats for all vehicles because it's primarily what I use for PvE, but for PvP I switch back to Sabo, and the Al Hussein actually gets 825mm of penetration with them, so this tank can do quite a bit. And, I don't know, I mean I'm only going 48 km an hour now, it just seems like I'm reaching these speeds faster, I mean obviously now I'm going downhill, so yeah, but, I don't know, it seems like it might actually have better ground handling than, I don't know, the one in that wall. Uh, is this building always like this? Did they change this? I don't know what's going on. Anyway, I feel like it's a little bit faster than the Challenger. Now, that could just be because on this map, it's actually all street, so there is no ground resistance, but I don't know. I like it. I really do like this tank. I love the Challenger, so, I mean, it's no contest. Like, since I heard they were adding another Challenger, I didn't even care. I was like, great. Oh, look at this. What is it? There's these new map features. This going on there. Anyway, standard battle, so I'm just kind of moving up this line just to get this work of a... I mean, nobody else in my team's here, so I'm not really going to be supported. But, you know, yeah, that's what I like. Oh, I thought the Merc was going to come around. Now i got to play catch up before he gets completely destroyed. We're actually losing because none of my team played the other point. So I should probably turn around and do that. I'm gonna pop a shot into this Merkaba. And then return to base. Let's see if I can actually turn this thing around. Nice, another shot set him on fire. Our base is currently being captured. I don't know why they would capture our base if they just fight us. But it looks like I'm going to be returning to base too late to do anything about it. Which is unfortunate. Oh, for sure, there's three of them on that base. That sucks. I mean, I don't know. Why would they cap out? They're winning 15 to 5. Why would they? Identify. Awesome. Oh, the shot. Why they capped out, I don't know. What? <laughs> what? That was an awful game. Um. That was just. I just I don't know, I mean, hey, whatever gets your fix, that was just stupid. If you're ever in a standard game, don't cap out like a moop when you're winning 15-5. to 5. Don't do that to your teammates who are trying to get kills. That was just 
that enemy team just wasted an entire game for literally no good reason at all. Look at this. The highest damage done was 4,000. Like, no one had a chance to play. But top of my team in experience and damage, so I'll take it. I'll take it. Again, <laughs> second impression, great tank. Would have been a great game. But let's do some PvE now and see how it stacks up against bots. All right, on high mission. With a count leader too, who has the same camera Who wins? Alright, I just wish the enemy team hadn't tapped out. I would have liked a good brawl. I mean, it was always going to be a loss, but you never know. Yeah, they able to stop this thing. just exactly what it, you know, great penetration, low armor, low damage, and here, the whole idea behind it is that you can get into position quickly and um, overwhelm enemy vehicles by just sheer firepower, rate of fire, and it's a good vehicle for them, I'm glad they're moving because the challenger line doesn't work like that, it more closely resembles this tank here. So just good for the third part. Blind fire. Wait, I don't think I'm looking at that. Yeah, anyway, um I love the Challenger vehicle. The Challenger choose to okay, I don't play the game. It's not as good as I thought it was without playing stock. So this vehicle is I'll take that. That was a good. Hey, that was, that was a high roll. 801. Oh, I guess something you'll only get with the box. Too bad. We have 30 penetrating rounds so far. So, it's about 8,000 damage. It's about 840. We're getting some pretty good rolls here. And again, I think it's just because of the odds. So, I know I said I was going to go 2 and 2, but this is going to be the only PvE game I play because I feel like it'll pretty much be the same in every PvE. Or PvE, rather. Every bot is going to be the same. The other two vehicles don't well, actually. Oh, no. I don't think the Abrams has a hard time to guess because the real Abrams definitely did at that stage with the moment. It does now, it's using Israel's trophy, but that's neither here nor there. I know that Leopard does though. So 
Turn to the side. Lost the spread. Lift that shot straight into a rock. Yes. Fun to play with, not fun to play against. Um, let me this. We've already set two fires today, so actually that's probably where I is. There's no way out of 24 rounds I have. I just looked at that. So if you heard me say that okay. two seconds ago, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. Um, I set two fires. So there's that. Oh, come on. I did not mean to shoot that round. It was not supposed to go off, but then it did. So. Doing significantly less damage now because I'm firing the save up. But with way better penetration. So, easy. I should probably move up, right? I don't have that much I hate Not because of like the missile spam or anything. Sorry. Excuse me. Just because they're APS. Zero penetration. Throw that Abrams driver. I wonder if I can get the cheap Wow. Okay. That A25 is and the ERA protect on this thing is actually really good too. And, uh, we only took 169 damage from that XM1, which it should be significantly higher. Again, only 562 Oh, turn around the damage. Do not line that shot up. So yeah, I'll take 60,000 damage. <sighs> not the best game in this, but I had a really good time. I had a fun time playing it. Uh, really high rolls for those heat rounds with 840 something. Or, you know, both of them. Nice. So, oh, total, so I guess one of my blind fires did it. So 17,384 damage dealt. Only made about 27,000 credits though. Did a couple of missions. Alright, hit 80% or more of our shots and took the most hits. Did not do great in experience, and we were second place in damage only to the Terminator. So, all in all, I'll take it. I'll take it. Final verdict on the Al Hussein hybrid. It's exactly what I've been saying. Its armor is that of a Challenger. However, you don't get any good upgrades to it because ERA is the only thing you do get. And so you do have a nice set of hit points you have 4,000 hit points to mitigate the fact that you'll never be able to protect this frontal plate here but i don't really think it plays a big of a difference this amazing swiss cannon is just well it's amazing <laughs> great penetration great rate of fire um great damage values all in all i think it's the challenger one perfected so I'm going to give this as a vehicle first impression, just an 8 out of 10 as an MDT for its tier. 8 out of 10, it's that good. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to see any other Armored Warfare videos like this one or the reviews I'm going to be doing on the Leclerc and the Mephisto coming up later this week. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. It goes a long way to supporting this channel, letting me know that you want to see this kind of stuff and to continue making videos like this. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.